We've been going now for, for two months, and, and we've gotten a lot of, of work done in, in our individual skill work. And I think this is the best condition team that, that I've had a chance to start a fall with. Um, our arms are in really good shape, and, and um, Coach Neal's done a great job with our strength and conditioning. And, and our kids are just so excited about starting you know, having the capability of competing against each other on the field in inter-squad games. But I can't imagine anything being more exciting than, you know, than what we all saw on, on Saturday. And I just want to take a, a, men- a minute to mention, you know, what that does for every one of our, our student athletes. Because um, all of us are in this together and it's just an incredibly exciting time of year for our kids and um, and for, for every student at Mississippi State. So. Uh, you know, I would have been remiss if I didn't mention that. But uh, certainly we're, we are very excited about getting started, playing some inter-squad games, and kind of finding out where we are uh, as a team. I, I, I really like the new pieces of the, the puzzle. Um, you know, we, we, we have three kids uh, who are coming in as junior college, uh, after their junior college freshman year, which is a little bit unique. And I think all of those guys uh, have done a great job contributing so far. You know, the fall has never been truly an incredible indicator of how kids are going to do in the spring. Um, but certainly uh, you, you have to have some, you know, some type of competition to figure out, you know, who deserves those early opportunities. So You, uh, you mentioned the conditioning. Can you give us an update on health, and especially a guy like Paul Young, where he stands? Yeah, Paul Young is, is doing a lot better. We think he's right on time. He's had a couple of, of issues. Uh, I think he's had a, a groin injury. Um but outside of that, he's worked so hard in his rehab, and, and uh, I think Paul's come a long way. I think he's, I think all indications show that he's going to be ready in February. Um, I don't think Ross Mitchell has ever been as healthy as he is right now. He, he's just been outstanding. He's really, really changed his body uh, in kind of an exciting way in terms of his lower half. It's just so much stronger than it's been in the in the past. Um, I'm trying to think of, I, I don't, I don't imagine there's any. Uh, I don't remember any other injuries that are worth mentioning. So everybody else should be ready for the start. Yeah, I, I think everybody will be ready to, to play when we start. Will Cox is he kind of on the same path? As yeah, you know, Will Will has had a couple of, uh, of setbacks, so uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think he's you know somebody that uh, that obviously, I mean, he. he we, we're going to have to wait and see after this semester where he is. But but outside of Will, then, uh, you know, for the most part, I think everybody's pretty Shelley. Sure. Yeah, Shelly's in the same boat as Will. Um, you know, both those guys, you know, just kind of waiting and, and to see at the end of the fall where those guys are. What's different about the team this year or this fall? I think, you know, I just think it's one of those deals where we have a little bit more power. You know, certainly the ball has kind of changed the, the game a little bit with the lower seams and – I think the ball's going to fly a little bit better. Our, our place is still going to be a difficult place to hit a home run, but that's there's no reason why you know we can't hit doubles and triples and, and really try and use the gaps of our ballpark. So I think uh, yeah, I, I, I think we, we're going to be a little bit better uh, in the run scoring area. It's something we needed to improve upon, and I think I think we have the right pieces in place to uh, to be able to make that happen. With the new balls, how are the pitchers and adjusting to, especially because they have to have a little different grip, a little bit of delivery. Yeah, I think it's neat because our kids are really using closer to what a professional baseball is. It's the same baseball they've used in the summer their whole lives, but it's for some odd reason, when they play Division One baseball, they've always used a higher seam. Uh, I think it. I think it, it. From what I understand and, and talking to our players, and you know, I think it, it helps the slider. I really think it helps velocity a little bit, to be honest with you. I think it helps the two seamer. I'm not sure it helps the 12 6 type of breaking ball as much, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I, I don't think it's a dramatic difference. I just think uh, it, it, it will alter how far the ball goes a little bit. What I've been told is the ball we were using last year is something like a .95 or .99 seam. <coughs> The professional ball is more like a .55 seam, and what we're at is right in the middle of that, like a .77 seam, something like that. So, um, you know, we've noticed a little bit of a difference in BP, but 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 it's not dramatic. For a guy like Jake Vickerson, how big was it for him to have a really good summer? Yeah, I think so many of our guys, I think we had 22 guys go off and play summer baseball, and I think many of them had a great summer. So I think Jake has a lot of, a lot of confidence, and I think uh, – 
you know, summer baseball is just one of those experiences you need to have. You need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to be around a different group of guys. You need to have those different experiences that you have. And, and uh, that's what college is all about, is experiencing everything you possibly can that's positive. And I, I think it's a, a really neat thing for our players to do. And looking at last season, kind of when you reflect on it, was it one of your most difficult coaching experiences in the sense that you were still shuffling lineups all the way up through May? Yeah, I think so. You know, it, it, you know, you lose shortstop, you lose outfield, you, you lose some major components uh, from the 2013 club. And, and, you know, I think we're still searching for that start. We knew that we had a good bullpen, but um, I think we were just still kind of searching for that, that starting rotation. And, and I, I think that's going to be better uh, this year than it's been in the past also. But uh, – I think the neat thing about what we have going now is so many of our pitchers understand that there is a future for you in college baseball if you're a dominant, you know, back of the game type of guy who has great stuff. Um, I, I think that's been proven in our program. So um, I think in the past you've had so many kids who are afraid to be starters. You know, they, they didn't want to be a starter. I mean, I'm sorry, didn't want to be a reliever as much. And now I think we have more kids who, who – really tried seeing themselves fitting into that role. What have you seen in year two from guys like Dakota Hudson and, and Austin Sexton and those guys? Yeah, Austin's been great. Um, you know, Dakota had went out had a great summer as well. Um, yeah, I, I think I think those guys have really matured. You need your freshmen to go out and have great summers and experience different things, come back and, and have a great sophomore year for you. So, yeah, both those guys. You mentioned the end of the game guys, the, the relievers that can thrive in this program. Who are some young names that could become those guys in the system in the future? Um, Jacob Billingsley is certainly somebody that we we talked about in that role. You know, really, I hate to even throw that out yet because we're not that. This is what the, the fall is about. The reason I mentioned Jacob is it's just, that's his goal. And that's that's really he's kind of pigeonholed in that area. And he had a great summer, we're leaving uh, as well. Um, I, I, there's several guys that fall into that moment. I, I would like to, you know, just to reserve comment on that until we have a chance to get through our fall. Wes really pushed himself a lot last year because he wanted to have a, that option year. How has he come back in attitude this season? Oh, Wes's attitude's been phenomenal. I, I think he's made so many adjustments in every part of his life, and it's really neat to see him be the great leader that he is and, and come out and, and really, especially in conditioning, I, I think he has just worked so hard in conditioning to, to finish every single time and and, and to push himself. And uh, it's 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 really you know he went off and you know again instead of just you know constantly worrying or, or pouting about what happened last year, I, I think he's gone off and and really been diligent about trying to improve his game, and I think he's done that. Do you think as a, as a team, collectively, there was some pressing last year with the way that it, the expectations were and then the start, the slow start in the beginning? Do you think there was some overall pressing? I, I think so, I, but I also think that, uh, you know, we, we had some new new players in, mm -hmm. in really key situations. I mean, you, you, you go into a year where you have a, you don't have a catcher who's ever caught one inning of Division One baseball, and I think that's another area of our program that's going to be really right. improved. Um, I, I think you go in trying to figure out who your shortstop is and you have some competition there and we found that guy. Um, you know, you go into it with, uh, you know, really not that power guy in the middle of the order, you know, to, to step forward and, and we, we need that to happen this year and I, I think uh, I think we have more candidates. You know, we had to redshirt some guys a year ago just because of sheer numbers um, I, that, that really have a chance to be power bats, and, and those guys uh, you know, will have their opportunities this year. I know it's the fall and you're still working, but at this point, is there more of an identity to the team? Like you said, last year trying to find an identity with the catcher, with the shortstop, with Westback. Is there more of an identity? Well, our identity is always going to be about you know being trying to be the best defensive club in America, mm -hmm. um, trying to be the best situational pitching staff in America. Um, you know trying to dominate at home as a ball club. You know, we really put an emphasis on our ball club trying to get the extra base hit, trying to lead the nation in doubles, trying to really play in the gaps, um, really trying to be a little bit more reckless with our runners on the bases. Uh, I guess a smart recklessness. Th those are the, the main things that we're trying to get done with, with this club. That's what I want the identity of this club to be. John, you mentioned football. You haven't been on one of those since Rick Rogers place right into me national spotlight. You remember how, I know it was a whirlwind few weeks for you at that time, but how did y'all handle the, all of the national hype? 
Well, you know, I, I think um, I think you're so focused in on what you do that you don't know. I think that's a neat thing for me is watching what's, you know, the media frenzy that's going on right now. And I know football and baseball are completely different sports in, in terms of media and social media, but just watching what's, you know, enveloping our university and college football right now, it's just, you know, you just start wondering, wow, are the kids on the inside seeing all the things or experiencing that I'm experiencing <laughs> as a fan or our players or the students? Because you can get lost if, if you start doing that. But Dan's done such a great job of keeping those kids focused, and nobody's more focused than number 15 over there. And it's just it's fun to watch that. It's fun to watch them go about their business in the weight room. It's fun to watch them go through their practices. Uh, yeah, it's just I think we have an incredible – coaching staff, incredible leadership over there, and, and it's just, it's fun to watch it unfold over a five, six year period, because I think there's a time where you could not have envisioned this as a fan, but I'm telling you that coaching staff envisioned this, and it's, you know, a lot of it's come to fruition, and, you know, we still are six games into it, but it's a lot of fun to watch. At the same, you played on a team that was ranked number one, and I know it was expected back then of your program, and it's new for these guys, but as an athlete, what does it mean when people say that you're number one in the country? You know, it's fun to talk about back in the dorm or in your apartment or, you know, when you're going out to eat with your friends and everything. That's, that's awesome to talk about. But I tell you what, when you're around your coaching staff, you know, as a player, you better not say it. You know, you better not, you know, <laughs> let your coaches hear you talk about being number one. And I guarantee you that's how it is in football right now. You know, it's that, that's not what they want to hear. They want to hear about how stinking good Kentucky is mm -hmm. and – and how well they're playing right now and how difficult it is to play uh, at Commonwealth Stadium at the University of Kentucky. I mean, I can attest to, by, I can attest to that. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think there's some neat things going on over there. And, it's uh, and, you know, again, from a distance, it's, it's fun to, to watch it unfold.